Aleluya. Oh, it's so good to be back in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. of the Lord. Hallelujah. I wish I had about three people out in the audience. 
You've been through hell and high water, but it's so good to be back. It's so good to be back. It's so good to be back. It's so good to be here. It's so good to be in the presence of my brothers and sisters. It's so good to be back in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, I know for myself it's so good to, good to be back. Good morning, church. The scripture for today is Psalms 1 in its entirety. It reads as follows. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinner, nor sitteth in the seat of the scoundrel. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his seasons. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. I read for you Psalms 1 in its entirety. Uh, let us pray. O heavenly and everlasting God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the almighty God, that nothing is impossible for, the God who sits high and looks low, who saves souls, who save sinners, my God. God, I'm so glad that you are my God. In all these trying times, God, you all we have to lean on. It seems like when things as bad as they can get, they get even worse. That's why we come running to your throne with our burdens and leaving them there, Lord. Lord, you are a deliverer. You are a protector. You are a provider. Lord, you delivered me out of my sins when I was hell bound. Lord, you protect me daily as I drive up and down the freeway and move around in society. You protect me from all the evil that goes on around me, Lord. You provide my all of my needs, Lord. When it looks like I can no longer make end meet, you're always there, Lord. I just want to thank you for being the God that you are. God, you don't have to do it, but you do it anyway because of your agape love for your people, Lord. I know some of us are not worthy of being saved, but you saved us anyway. Lord, we're waiting on that day when you come back and claim the victory that you already won. Until then, we got to stay on the battlefield fighting for you, Lord. And Lord, we hope that you never leave us and never forsake us, Lord. We send a special prayer out to our sick, our shut-in, Lord. We pray for the children, Lord, and the things that they have to deal with in today's world. Give them understanding, Lord. Let them know that you are the only way. Lord, we ask it all in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. And we love you and we need you, Lord. We call on your name because we know no other name to call, Lord. You're always there for us, Lord. You lead us out of the darkness and to the light, Lord. We reach to you when we have no other place to reach. And Lord, we just want to send out our love, our praise, and lift you up and exalt you today. We ask that you let your spirit come in this place. Touch the heart as hard and soften them, Father. Lead us on the way you would have us to go, Lord. Don't let us be like the children of Israel and be forever unbelievers, Lord. Forever forsaken you, Lord. But pull us back on the right path, Lord. Keep us 
going the way you want us to go. And have mercy on us, Lord, because we don't understand, but we know that you do. We know that you hold the answers, Lord. We don't have them, Lord. Lord, sometimes I'm at my wit's end. I just throw up both hands and give up. But I know you know. That's why I call on you, my God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the creator of all, the sustainer of all, the God that can make no mistakes and do no wrong, the God that can save the worst of sinners. In Jesus Christ's name, I pray this prayer. And I submit it humbly in the name of Jesus. Amen. Have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is tramping out where the vintage, where the graves of wrath. He has looked his faithful lightning of his terrible swift soul. He is true, he is more. beauty of the lily you better say Christ was born across the sea with a glory in his bosom that transfigures you and me and to make men holy let us die to make men free while God is born is marching on
morning. Our responsive reading this morning will be coming from Deuteronomy chapter 10, verses 1 through 12. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verses 1 through 12. And it's titled this morning, The Wonderful Mercy of God. I'm going to say that again. The Wonderful Mercy of God. At that time, the Lord said unto me, Hew thee two tables of stone like unto the first, and come up unto me into the mount, and make thee an ark of wood. And I made an ark of shittim wood, and hewed two tables of stone like unto the first, and went up into the mount, having the two tables in mine hand. And he wrote on the tables, according to the first writing, the Ten Commandments, which the Lord spake unto you in the mount out of the midst of the fire in the day of the assembly. And the Lord gave them unto me. And I turned myself and came down from the mount, and put the tables in the ark which I had made. And here they be, as the Lord commanded me. And the children of Israel took their journey from the rock of the children of the land unto Moriah. There Aaron died, and there he was buried. And Eleazar his son ministered in the priest's office in his stead. For thence they journeyed unto good Golda, and from good Golda to Jotbath, a land of rivers of water. And at that time the Lord separated the tribe of Levi to bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord, to stand before the Lord to minister unto him, and to bless his name unto his day. Wherefore Levi had no part nor inheritance with his brethren. The Lord is his inheritance according as the Lord thy God promised him. And I stayed in the mount, according to the first time, forty days and forty nights. And the Lord hearkened unto me at that time also, and the Lord would not destroy me. And the Lord said unto me, Arise, take thy journey before the people, that they may go in and possess the land, which I swear unto their fathers, to give unto thee, to them, excuse me. And, and now, Israel, what do the Lord thy God require thee, but to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Give an honor to God and all praises to God, Pastor Miller, ministers, members, honors, guests, and friends. Good morning. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us be glad in it. I'm very glad to be here. Very glad to be back in the house of the Lord. I'd like to take this time to welcome everybody this morning to our annual Martin Luther King program. This is a program that we try to do in honor of Dr. Martin Luther King. Myself, I'm blessed to be able to say that I was born during the time that he was alive. I was in elementary school, but he was always on television. And at that time, I didn't understand the significance and the, the uh, the impact that he would have on us as a people. 
I can remember coming up, going downtown to the Majestic OST, and my parents took me to see the good, the bad, and the ugly. We had to sit upstairs at the, at the top. But I always thought sitting up there was a premium seat. You know, we had a chance to look down and look at the picture show. But I didn't realize at that time that blacks would only sit at the top. The whites sat down at the bottom. And the next time, I think we went to go see Goldfinger. And again, we downtown, we had to go sit up at the top. And I asked my dad, I said, why, why are we always sitting up here at the top, you know? And he just, this is how it is, son. You know, didn't realize at that time that we were sitting at the top of movie theaters. We were going to colored only, only uh, 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 restaurants. When my parents would travel, after they would get off from work during the summertime, when they would travel, they would either have to sleep in their car or find a hotel that would suit blacks. Didn't realize at the time that there were some restaurants that if you would go to, you'd have to go around the back if you wanted to eat. Eat in the kitchen. Or take your food and take it back to where you got came from, unless you were going to go to a black restaurant or a soul food restaurant. But during that time, we were a closer-knit community. All the communities that were together, we were living in Fifth Ward at the time. And, and when we lived in Fifth Ward, there was a grocery store across the street. Yeah. There was a cleaners right there. Mr. Anderson Cleaners was right two doors down. Everything that you needed was in the community. You didn't have to go anywhere else. We were all tight-knit. But during that time, we were still listening to Dr. Martin Luther King make his speeches and whatnot. And unfortunately, by the age of eight, I was eight years old, he was assassinated. Never realizing the impact that he had made towards our people. The progress that we have made, although we still have a long ways to go. There's a lot of progress that has been made since then. You can pretty much stay where you want to stay. You can pretty much go where you want to go. You go in any restaurant you want to go now, and you can sit down here at the bottom if you like going to the movies. So I just want to take this time to, to tell everybody that, again, as the good Lord always tell us, he always wants us to love each other, to look out for one another, and that's one of the things that he had tried to get across to us, yeah. that we should love one another. He gave his life that we can enjoy some of the fruits that we're enjoying today. So with that being said, I would like everybody to sit back, relax, and enjoy what has been prepared for you in honoring this morning as we honor and commemorate the great legend, Dr. Martin Luther King. Thank you very much. And at this time, I'd like to thank my brother, Donnie Sherman. He's not, he's not here. Not here. Okay, so we'll proceed with a song, and the program will proceed as follows. Thank you. How many of you know the Lord has been good, and he's always good? That's going to be our theme this morning. He's just been good to us. He's been better to us than we've been to ourselves. Just been so good to me. He woke me up this morning. Just been so good to me. I sure wish I had some witness to say.
feel, I feel, I feel, I feel, I feel, oh Lord have mercy, I feel, I feel, I feel, I feel, oh shucks, good, said amen. Come on, the Lord been good to you. You ought to show some sign. I mean, if the Lord really been good to you, you ought to make sure you make, come on, let's make some noise in here. I said, if the Lord been good to you, you ought to make some noise up in here. If he's made a way for you, you ought to make some noise. If the Lord been good, I mean, even this morning, if the Lord been good to you. Amen. Amen. Let me, let me do this real quickly. Uh, we're going to do another song that Brother Sherman has made his grand appearance, his arrival in Brother Dinah Sherman fashion. Uh, he's not here to kill bugs. He's here to give us some words. Let's celebrate Brother Sherman for what the Lord has brought him to Amen. Come on, let's celebrate God's healing power. God's miraculous healing power. Somebody ought to get happy when God heals somebody else. It don't always have to be me that get healed. When somebody else get healed, I'm able to clap for them as well and celebrate them. Amen. Amen. We thank God for him. We're going to let him. Amen. 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 That's another. That's another. That's another. Amen. If you'll bring that mic down for him so that he can give to us what the Lord has given to him. to our great, great, and glorious God, who has allowed us yet another opportunity to even live. This is, this is only a test. As they say on TV, this is only a test. Except in real life, it's for real. It's not a game, for we are awaiting on God's perfect timing. God's timing is not by happenstance or coincidence. It's deliberately thought out on purpose, perfect timing. We've been waiting, worshiping, praying to God for a better day, a better night, and a more and complete life. It's not just important, it's also essential, a way of life, a new beginning, a brand new start in life. Please, Lord, allow me to speak with power, praise, purpose. Amen. 
allow me to exhibit a better flow in life. No stress or strife. Please, God, allow me to speak with the conviction, wisdom, and knowledge. Allow me to reach my people in a manner that would not offend them, but rather welcome them and put them at ease and peace in an effort that would make all the efforts more reliable and believable. We must, as a people, ensure that we entrust, include, and endure. All the love and humanity that is available to mankind include anyone and everyone the least important to the most important to God. We are all important, no big eyes and little U's. We all matter the same. Thank God for fairness and equality. Endure all the trials and tri tri tribulations that may come our way. Fairness and unfair may come. Endure through it. and do it through it all. God has a way of making sense out of nonsense, joy out of pain, good out of bad. God is in control through it all. However you choose, no matter what you decide, God is the bottom line choice. We as a people decide to ask God to bless us, keep our minds stayed on thee. We have the ability to keep our focus our positive, on positive things and stay in the right frame of mind. It's just good to know the Lord. We need to serve a true and living God. How to find, <clears throat> how to find in your life is, a, is just a question. However, it's also a statement. It can be a, direct, a directive in the sense of how you can find God. First of all, God is never lost. We are lost. And when, and when we are with God, we are found. Lost and found without him. It's been over a half century since Dr. King, since Dr. King first spoke about I have a dream, much water has gone under the bridge since he first spoke. Nonetheless, he had a lot to say, even more to do. God blessed him with the time he had, he, with the time he had here, and for that we are thankful. The King and the Dream Conclusion. Dr. King spoke about freedom, life, love, children, and the dream. I have a dream. Thank God Almighty for the dream. Thank you, Almighty.
His goodness and His mercy towards us, towards us that don't deserve it. I say the Lord's goodness and the Lord's mercy. No matter how many rascalities I've been through, no matter how cantankerous and ambiguous I've been, the Lord has still placed on display his goodness and his mercy. Not because we've been so good. But because the Lord is good to us. Somebody know he's good to us. Not because we've been cute, cautious, or careful. But because he's God all by himself. I need somebody that are witnessing way back at me. That you've been through some sicknesses even before COVID ever came out. And the Lord healed your body. I, I wish I had about 25 folk that, that the doctors told you you wouldn't be here now. But because of his goodness. Maybe I didn't hit your street, but I need somebody to talk to me that you had more bills than you had finances. And God just kept on paying your bills. And somebody you're thinking and thanking God that you have health care now. And God say, I don't want you to thank me because you have health care. I want you to thank me because when you didn't have it, I didn't let you get sick. Somebody was about to lose their mind. Because you got a pink slip. But let me tell you, don't lose your mind over the job you lost because you're going to need that mind on the next job God gives you. Somebody, Brother Sanders' mind is all discombobulated. You, you're about to throw in the towel for actions of our own. We, we're about to give up. And God wanted me to tell you, don't you dare give up on God. Because God won't give up on you. What an awesome God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Come on, talk back to me. What an awesome, mighty God we, we serve. I want to thank the Mitchell family for this thank you card, for thanking us for being with you and partnering with you. We're continuing to lift you in our prayers. Let's continue to lift Sister Perlene Gibson in our prayers who's having a hard time after the transitioning of her daughter. Let's remember Sister Minerva Sanders who had a stroke a couple of weeks ago. But I was able to talk to her. And I'm the one who had to get off the phone because she was talking so much. That's God's grace and God's mercy. Let's pray for Brother Jose Brown who had to be rushed to the hospital this morning. Pastor Charles Mays out of Temple, Texas who have several underlying issues and COVID-19 caught him. Pastor, Pastor L.J. Como from the Fiesta Missionary Baptist Church who a year and a half ago, a vehicle lost control and hit the left side of their sanctuary. And while they are still in the process of making repairs, a vehicle hit it two days ago. 
this time someone died and they hit the right side. But somebody know that worship starts in the heart, not in the building. That somebody should have woke up this morning with worship on their mind. That I don't wait to get to church to get happy. I come here happy because the Lord have already done some great. Anybody know the Lord have done some great things for you? So while we lift them and others. And if you don't pray for nobody else. place your pastor's name there that God has been so good to all of us that we owe it to God to pray for somebody else anybody prayed for somebody else just this morning the song say Lord whatever Whatever you're doing, not in another season, but in this season, don't do it without me. Any, anybody know that you're going through, but the Lord have this thing? Lord, whatever you're doing. In this season, don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. I mean, I need somebody to go ahead and wave right there. And just, Lord, whatever you do. season please don't do it without me oh lord have mercy don't do it without me anybody need some healing today lord if you heal me Healing in this season. Don't do it without me. Ooh. Don't you do it without me. Maybe you don't need healing, but you want a blessing. Anybody want a blessing? Lord. If you bless me, bless me in this season, please don't do it without me. Don't you dare do it without me. Say it for me one more time. Lord, whatever you do in the sea, please don't do it. No, no, no. Without no, me. No, no, no. I don't know what you're doing. No, no. But don't do it without me. Don't, don't do it without me. I know you'll make a way. Don't do it without me. Sometimes I don't do it without me. And sometimes now do it without me. Every time I turn around, do it without me. You just keep on blessing me. 
Anybody know he's a good God? Do it without. He made a way out of no way. Please don't, don't do it without me. Don't you dare. Amen. Let me thank God for these pastors and preachers that are in God's pulpit. We thank God for you. Thank God for our other locations. I tell you, we're a church with five locations. We have an in-person location. We thank God for you. Sister Sims, you messed me up. You was in the wrong seat. But I know you back there with Sister Binder, my mom. So we thank God for you and for everybody that's here today. We thank God for our Zoom location. Some are showing their faces, some are not. Uh, I think they're getting a little lazy on Zoom and they don't want me to see they're still in pajamas. They used to show their faces. So, Sister Rasmus, we're going to have to call a roll and call them out that they get back in their church clothes, getting ready for church settings. We thank God for our Facebook location. Thank God for who we see that's already viewing and already on. And we want to also thank our Instagram location. And we cannot forget our YouTube family. So we thank all of our locations on today for being in the house of worship and in the house of the Lord. Uh, we have today, I want to thank again Brother Donnie Sherman for the words of encouragement. Just to see him, uh, words of encouragement to me. Sister Rasmus, we thank her for putting this program together. And she was not late, she was early. He, man, scared me half to death, but all right. She was early. So I want to thank you uh, for all that you've done. And today uh, we have one that has been known to come this way. He's been this way before, and we do not want to introduce him, but we rather want to present him. I want to thank Reverend Lang for being with us today, and Pastor Ellison, Reverend Henry, and to uh, this young upcoming giant, Reverend Walker, who I'm gonna keep my hands on, and I'm gonna keep my hands together, Every now and then I might have to wring his neck, but I'm going to keep him close to me. Amen. Keep him close to me. Amen. Let's thank God for young men that serve in the Lord. Everybody young is not in prison nor in jail. I say young men serve in the Lord. We thank God for them. Let me thank God for these singers who bail me out today. Thank God for these that minister to us and song and to our uh, music ministry and our media ministry. I want to get everybody out the way now so I don't have to do this after the word of God that we can eat. Anybody ready to hear a word from the Lord on today? Amen. I need a word from the Lord. Amen. We have with us today none other than a brother and a friend, one of God's good preachers. He can preach uh, we always talk about who's the most country, um, but, but Uncle B, he didn't ask me for breakfast. It was a package that came in my office, and the first thing he said is, there's the coon. So that's my coon-eating friend, and I told him I'll get him a coon. He'll get the first one, I'll take the second one. But I want to thank God for him and his friendship down through the years, he is a member of the Holy Trinity Missionary Baptist Church where his pastor is none other than Reverend Dr. Richard Jewell Rose. And we thank God for Dr. Rose allowing Reverend Sivaran to come this way. And I do not need to have a long presentation because good meat makes his own gravy. But I will ask you as a token of respect, if you would lift up your right hand as we bring the man of God in the person of Reverend Sammy D. Silverain.
And all the people of God said amen. We greet you with Jesus' joy. Happy New Year's to you. Respect to our brother, our friend, our president, and our confidant, Dr. Miller, to uh, my lifelong friend and brother, um, Pastor Daniel Henry, to my little brother in the ministry, who I'm so glad to see today, Reverend Walker, and to these other distinguished preachers who graced this pulpit with us, to all of you, our father's children, to the Mount Hebron family, who I love and you have loved on me for so many years. Sister Miller, God bless you. And to all of you, our father's children. Amen. There is a word from the Lord. I do want you to pray for us with respect to our pastor, um, Pastor Richard Jewel Rose. We certainly are grateful to the Holy Trinity family. I'm delighted to have two of my brothers, one older and one younger, here with us. Just wave your hand, big brother and little brother, to my cousin. I'm glad to have here with us and some more dear friends who've come to Sister Henry. God bless you. Thank you so much for being here with us today. In the book of Exodus, to my friend and brother, Brother Sherman, you have lifted my spirit this morning. God bless you for your words and for your presence. The book of Exodus. Amen. The book of Exodus, the first chapter, amen. As we began, happy holiday, our Martin Luther King emphasis, and happy black history for 2022, amen. We are afforded a privilege again to represent not only our culture, but our Christ. The first chapter of Exodus, look at the eighth verse, if you would. The eighth verse says, Now there arose a new king over Egypt who did not know Joseph. Go to the second chapter of Exodus and the 22nd verse. Amen. 20, 23rd verse. During those many days, I'm reading from the ESV version. During those many days, the king of Egypt died and the people of Israel groaned because of their slavery and cried out for help. Their cry for rescue from slavery came up to God and God heard their groaning and God remembered his covenant with Abraham with Isaac and with Jacob God saw the people of Israel and God knew and God knew look at the seventh verse of the third chapter then the Lord said I have surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters. I know their suffering and I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey 
to the place of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. And now, behold, the cry of the people of Israel has come to me. And I have also seen the oppression with which the Egyptians oppressed them. Come, I will send you to Pharaoh that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? Amen. 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 I want to share with you from the thought this morning, an on-time God that owns time an on time God that owns time I have my boo here with me my cheerleader sister Rand if she wave her hand amen 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 amen, amen. God bless an on time God amen that owns time amen my brothers and sisters this book of exodus it's an interesting book it is one of the five books that is accredited uh, to Moses as the writer but if you really take the time to read the book of Genesis into the book of Exodus, you will quickly discover that the book of Exodus is a continuation of the story from the book of Genesis. Amen. While uh, you get a chance to really look at it and listen to the flow, you will discover that God is the author, but Moses is given the credit. God is seen throughout his own story. Amen. He is seen throughout his own story in this pericope, not only as God, but the Lord, the Yahweh, the God who is present among his people. You're going to pray for me, aren't you? Thus, the book of Exodus is a connecting link between the origin of the people in God's promise to Abraham and the beginning of the theocratic kingdom under Moses. If you would do the research and look backwards, you will discover that when you hear, amen, in the first chapter, amen, that, that there were, arose a king over Egypt who knew not Joseph, if this king who, who has risen up does not know Joseph, then it's obvious that he does not know the God of Joseph. You do know Joseph, don't you? Joseph is that child, that last child of Jacob, that child who was a special child, a child who, uh, who had dreams and visions uh, that God would move upon his people. And it is this Joseph that Amen. His own brothers who despised and hated him uh, desired to kill him, but yet God wouldn't let them kill him. So they placed him in a pit, only from a pit, amen, uh, uh, on, 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 a, 
on the price block to be bought and then to be taken from the price block as a slave into Egypt. And then from Egypt, he is uh, taken from there into the palace uh, and then put in prison and then back in the palace. And it is this Joseph who became the first director of the welfare department in Egypt when they had a famine coming in the land. It is this Joseph who's been planted and placed and positioned in Egypt because God planned on making his dream come true about his own family who would need him one day to take care of them. And if you really knew about Joseph, you and I would also know about God. Amen. And, 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 and if you and I would know about this Joseph and the God he served, this Pharaoh would know. But since he does not know Joseph, the Bible is telling us he does not know God. And you know, it's pretty terrible uh, to be right now in this world without the vaccine. But it's worse to be in this world without God. It would be worse for you to be in this world trying to live in a climate and not know that, that God is in control. You ain't sitting here without COVID because you took the shot. You sitting here delivered through COVID because God is in control. Somebody need to see in this pericope of the book of Exodus because it tells of the great exodus of the Israelites from Egypt under the leadership of Moses. Amen. And this ain't the first time that a generation of people have been delivered from something. And so somebody this morning need to know that there is hope. For those who know God, there is hope that if you understand that God is in control. Can I get a witness? It is here, my brothers and sisters, in the book of Exodus that we see the continuation of history recorded in from Genesis. And at the end of Genesis, if you flip back with just a couple of chapters, you will see that in the end of Genesis, Joseph dies. But what God is doing in relations to telling his story and showing us how he works behind the scene continues. The story of God continues amen amen and hence we need all the word of God we need to properly approach the word of God we need to properly give ourselves to the word of God if there is anybody here this morning that is really seeking an answer in the climate and the culture and the counterculture time that you and I are in and it looks like they're trying to send us backwards instead of forward. You need to read the book of Genesis and the book of Exodus to discover that God don't have to be in the front to be in control. He can work it behind the scenes. Somebody in here, I see how you look this morning and you looking good but I know it ain't because you got in front of a clean mirror I know it ain't because you so healthy and so wise it's because God is working behind the scenes of your life and brothers and sisters I want to share this message with you so that you can leave here today knowing that God is not only an on time God but he owns time the question becomes, what are you doing with the time that he's given you? What are you doing? 
The overview of Exodus, brothers and sisters, this story is the forward view. The overview of the Exodus story is a forward view of our own possibilities. Of whether we learn from our past or whether we will repeat our history because of sin and disobedience. Brothers and sisters, we all need to learn how to wait on God's perfect timing. And if we, 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 the United States, we, we, black folk, black people, we, we of this color culture, if we, brothers and sisters, don't be careful in time, amen, on planet Earth, we are headed backwards to Egypt on the hard taskmastership. I wish somebody hear me. When you take a chance, write this down. 1 Corinthians 10, 1 through 11 shares with us that this story of Exodus is recorded not only here, but even in the New Testament. And it's said that it is put there and written there as an example for you and I to read so we would know the story of our past. It's important because you and I need to understand that slavery has its place. Suffering has its purpose. And even while uh, there is negativeness overshadowing slavery, you must look at it and discover it is God who permits, amen, these 70 members of this family, amen, who he promises under an Abrahamic covenant to make of Abraham and his offsprings a great nation. God was carrying Abraham and his family to the promised land. But it was important that you see God working behind the scene. Because if he would have got Abraham and his offsprings and his family to the promised land ahead of time, it would not have been enough of them to deal with the crisis that, are, that was in the region. But God allowed them to tarry in Egypt. You do know he got them there because they were hungry. He got them there because he needed to feed them. Let me quickly tell somebody, God got a whole lot of ways he could put food on your table. Talk back to me, somebody. Somebody in here is old enough to know, that even though they are flashing it before us the, on television and on the news, that there's a shortage of meat, there's a shortage of groceries. I need somebody to know that God's economy ain't never short. Somebody been here in here living long enough to know that God can feed you with cush cush and milk. He can feed you with cornbread and milk. Talk back to me, somebody. Grits and gravy. God has always successfully put food on the table for his own people. Israel is placed in, in, in slavery and slavery is real brothers and sisters because slavery can serve as a substitute of chastisement for God's people's disobedience amen right now we're trying to blame a lot of things on your last president we're trying to blame a lot of things on what's going on in this country but whatever predicament you might find yourself in today, you ought to ask yourself the question, where is God? And where am I at with God in time? Am I just soaking up space on planet Earth? Am I just in the way of the traffic? Am I just in the grocery store minding my own business, not worrying about who can't come in the grocery store? What am I doing with the time 
that God has given me? Am I taking advantage of the voters right? Am I taking advantage to get others to the poll, to get others? I, 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 I frequent uh, the last six months, I frequent uh, six new libraries. And you can count our people on one hand. You done got quiet on me. In those six libraries, every one of them, I could count folk that look like me on one hand. And everybody else in there was of another persuasion. Where are we in God's timetable? Do we see God? Do we know God? And God forbid that this pandemic gives people the courage to say maybe God want us at home and not at church. My brothers and sisters, the first chapter deals with Exodus in, um, with, with Israel in slavery. Amen. In slavery. In slavery, what was the cause of the slavery? It was twofold. It was to in to increase the Israelites. It was to increase them and to populate them because God had a plan. In the midst of this 2022, we are hearing about uh, all kinds of things under law and legislation where are we in all of this not only uh, was was their purpose to their uh, enslavement and it was the cause uh, of increasing the Israelites population but is also to raise up the ignorance of Egypt so God can be doing more than one thing at a time. Am I helping anybody? Not only do we see the cause, but we see the characters of slavery. It was forced labor to build cities for Pharaoh. And because it would raise up the consciousness of Israel that if I can build somebody else's city, when God set me free, and get me to a land that I could call my own, I ought to have a greater excitement to build my own city. Somebody missing this. Somebody missing it. God had a motivational plan going on that he can use Israel even under slavery to build a city for a pharaoh that don't know him. And yet God has blessed us all, all over this building, we are blessed, and he's blessed us with this, he's blessed us with that. But the question comes, with all of this freedom, with all of this blessing, what are you building? We're sitting in this beautiful edifice as an example of a man who understands this, who, a man who has gone but understood this pericope. And even with his own life, even with his own poverty, even with his own uh, uh, insufficiencies, amen, this church has a history from a J.J. Robertson who saw that there will come a need for a Mount Hebron. There will come a need for a place to worship in Sunnyside, Texas. He ain't here, but he had a mind that when God would give him the freedom, he would dedicate himself to build a building that would benefit somebody else's children. Somebody else's children, children. Somebody else's children, children, children. And the question comes to mind, since you and I done made 2022, what can God build on us? I know you don't want to hear. Not only does this text shows us the cause and the character, but then it shows us the consequences. 
There is consequences, brothers and sisters, to you and I being afforded this privilege under a, a God who owns time and have given us time. There is a consequence to you not giving yourself to the will, the word, and the way of God. That's why Israel is in Egypt. Not only does this text show us the cause and the character and the consequences, but, but there is a command. And that command is a requirement. Brothers and sisters, even with this blessing, you know the story that God says to them way before he gets them, when he grants them privilege to be uh, uh, delivered uh, from Egypt, God says, when I get you where I'm going to get you, when I get you to the promised land, I want you to represent me. There is requirements when you get to the promised land. When you get there, brothers and sisters, he says to them, don't be like the Canaanites. Don't be like the other people. You're going to live in houses that you ain't going to have to build. You're going to eat, drink from wells that you don't have to dig. You're going to eat from vineyards that you don't have to plant. But when you get there, don't forget who brought you. Don't forget who taught you. Don't be forget who carried you through. Don't forget who I am. And guess what? Just like Israel, we have forgotten who God is. I, I know, I know. I could hear somebody saying, not me, Rub, not me, not me. No, no, no. I don't remember. Uh, amen. When was the last time you really done something for somebody else and didn't expect something in return? We're not here for ourselves. Can I get a witness? But I am so grateful that the text shows us that God is up to something. Tell somebody, God is up to something. The Bible says there at the end of the second chapter, and if you read backwards and do your history, that do you know how many years that this is the first time the Bible shows us that the children of God finally came together in prayer? When you read, right, during those many days, the king of Egypt died and the people of Israel groaned because of their slavery and cried out for help. They, they had been in slavery, but they still had been separated. And you would think that if they're in slavery, they ought to get along. Come on, somebody. We in the same church membership. It's a folk, I don't know this church, but it's a folk, and that's every church. It's a folk in this church, you save going to help me anyhow, but if somebody's sitting on the other side of the church, you can't stand. But you're going to heaven anyhow. Now, you can't stand each other on earth. You think God wants you in heaven? Ain't no hate in earth. I mean, in heaven. Ain't no jealousy in heaven. But God had to permit slavery to bring his people together in prayer. Somebody ain't getting that. If God has to, I remember uh, when it looked like the United States was under attack. Everybody was coming to prayer meeting. Black folk, white folk, all at the Capitol, all at the White House, holding hands on their knees, praying. And soon as, amen, looked like things got straight. We changed. Talk back to me, somebody. But I thank God that even in the midst of this history story, that God is telling through the writer I, uh, uh, Moses, God was at work behind the scenes. 
What's the reason for all this, Reverend? What's the reason? The reason was, was to detour them into Egypt to populate them. By the time the 70 persons of one family came out of Egypt, they were 600,000 strong. From 70 to 600,000. Don't tell me God don't know what he's doing. The question, brothers and sisters, are we on the team of God? Are we on the team of Egypt? You know, Egypt represents the world. Matter of fact, when you read through the Bible and even go into Revelation, Egypt represents the world. You and I need to decide today, do we represent the world or do we represent the word? It is the word that will last. It is the word of God that will bring a people through. It is the word of God that God desires for his people to never forget. There's another reason that you and I need to look at. And that is because God had a strategy. That God knew what he was doing with the children of Israel. And the question becomes to you and I individually, the question becomes to you and I personally, the question becomes to you and I as a family, do we believe that God knows what he's doing in this world? Do we believe that God knows what he's doing with your family? Is your family in the hand of God? If your family is in the hand of God and God is engaged in what he's doing in this pericope, then you are engaged. How do you know that, Reverend? Because in the midst of God having his people in slavery, God heard their prayers. He saw their predicament. He felt their pain. He saw how they were being treated. And in the midst of it, it was not an afterthought, brothers and sisters. It was a forethought. If you remember, in the midst of this slavery, that king that came along saw how Israel was multiplying and said, why is there so many Israelites? Why is there so many more people here uh, in this region than there are Egyptians? Hold up. Something is wrong here. Listen, call the midwives. Come here, midwives. Come here, midwives. Listen, while the Hebrews and the Israelites are having all of these babies, I want y'all to go because midwives were the ones that wasn't no health care. And he said, I want you to go down there and while they're having these babies, I want you to kill every male child. This was genocide. It was to kill off what God was doing in the life of Israel. Listen, I know this right now. God don't have to kill us. We killing ourselves. He said, I need you to go down in where the, the ghettos, where, where we got the slaves living, and every woman that is having a male child, kill it. And because God was at work in the life of the midwives, the midwives just couldn't do it. And not to do what the king commanded, a king that know not God was a suicide mission. But they were willing not to do what the king of the land wanted them to do because they were under the authority of the king of the universe. And the Bible said they just went back in there and told the king, every time we try to go in there to kill or get one of them babies, they done already dropped them babies. 
You need to read your story. They are them women so strong in Israel. Them black women so strong. They having them babies without a midwife. I wish somebody hear me. Amen. God has always put something in us that we cannot put in ourselves. Brothers and sisters, you need to know that God is an on-time God. And in the midst of what the king was trying to do, God raised a Levite child. God raised a little boy. Amen. God raised this little child. And the word got out that God was sending a deliverer. The Bible say that. Amen. Wow. Amen. The other children Amen. Boys were being picked up because the king couldn't stop them from having the babies. He said, well, then get all the male children, all of them babies two years and younger, and throw them in the Nile River. Why that was going on in the king's palace. God was down in the ghettos talking to Moses' mama. Say, listen, when you have this baby, while you're pregnant with this baby, I want you to take out your gifted pen and and take out your straws and make a bassinet. Fix it and pitch it and put slime in it and fix it so that you can use it for this baby. She did as God told her brothers and sisters, you need to know that this is called typology. Uh, That bassinet, that little thing that was made was equivalent not only uh, to the ark, but it is also a typology of Christ. Because if you know, when she finished the bassinet and she put the baby in it, God told her, now this is what I want you to do. Go down to the streams of the rivers of, of, of the Nile and put Moses, this baby, on the river. I'm going to save him because I have a job for him. Just like I had a job for you as a mama, I got a job for him when I raise him. And she took him and put him on the river and you know just like a river, it flows. But God blew a wind that sent it upstream and not downstream so it can get To the king's palace. Somebody ain't preaching or praying with me yet. You do know that good water comes from the king house and run downstream to go to the poor folks house. Uh, But yet God blew the bassinet upstream and, and yet gives a king a daughter who can't have any children. And yet when she finds the baby while taking a bath in her jacuzzi in the back of the palace, she sees this bassinet. Amen. Not a crocodile, not a snake, not not nothing ate, not nothing tipped over this basket because God had a purpose to get this basket. I'm just trying to tell you, he's an on-time God. And, and this woman finds this baby, and when she finds this baby, she say, that's a Hebrew baby. Oh, he's so pretty. Oh, let me go tell my daddy I want a baby, and since I can't have a baby, I found them, found this keepers, losers, weepers. I'm going to keep this baby, and the king granted her her wish and while she was holding this baby and looking at this baby Moses sister who worked part time up at the king's palace was right there watching the game going on and say "Well, that baby is a new baby do that baby need somebody to nurse it do you want me to go find somebody that can take care of this baby she said yeah girl that's a good idea go find somebody to take care of this baby guess what Miriam done Miriam ran straight home and say mama I got a job for you too I'm just trying to tell somebody that we serve an on time God can I get a witness and the question becomes to you and I what is God doing in time with you and I she took this baby gave it back to her mama she didn't ask for no resume She ain't asked, was her pap with milk? Some of you grown folk know what I'm talking about. Help me preach this so I don't go rated aura. She took this baby home and she said, listen, baby, I'm going to pay you 
while you're taking care of this baby. And when you wean him, bring him back to me. Ain't that something? There are some programs in Houston, Texas that'll pay you to take care of your own baby. What are you doing with your time? She took care of this baby, brought this baby to Moses, brought, brought Moses back to, to, to Pharaoh's daughter, this princess. She adopted this baby, raised him in the house, educated him in the house. But while mama was nursing him, she was singing this little light of mine. While mama was nursing him, she was singing, I will trust in the Lord. While mama was nursing him, she was singing, he's got the whole world in his hand. She put a foundation in him. So much so that when Moses became of age, he still visited his mother. And is this Moses who we see as the son of destiny? My question again, brothers and sisters, what are you doing with your time? My brothers and sisters, we need to teach our children. We need to make a point to return back to the dinner table. I remember when we had to go in at a certain time. Before the lights outside would go down, we had to be in the house. And it was in the house that mama told us to go take a bath. It was four of us. And we had to take turns in the same water. I wish somebody helped me here. And then when we would get through taking a bath, we came into the dining room. And mama would inspect their children. I wish somebody helped me. Mama would inspect us to know whether we washed right. I wish somebody helped me. Mama would look at our eyes to see if the white was white. And if it wasn't white, she would give us some cast oil or some asphidity. She would give us something to clean us out. If we wasn't in church, I might tell you because she knew that we was full of something. There was a time we knew our children. And just the other day on the news, a 15-year-old threw her newborn baby in the dumpster. But you and I come up when... Somebody couldn't have or take care of a child. We took care of the child and the newborn. Talk back to me somebody. And I'm wondering, do you know your story? What's your story? Why God is telling his story. Why Moses is sharing with us his story. What's your story? Everybody got a story. My story is I was born under the leadership of John F. Kennedy as the president. One year after my birth and six months, he was assassinated. Lyndon B. Johnson took over. He was known for his civil rights 
legacy signing the bills of Civil Rights Acts of 1964, the Voting Rights Acts of 1965, and the Civil Rights Acts of 1968. What's your story? Then in 1969 to 1974, the 34th President of the United States, R. M. Nixon, who served two terms. He saw the end of the, vet, the Vietnam War. He was the first man uh, moon landing took place under his leadership. Uh, but he was the only president who resigned from office because of his own scandals. What's your story? After him came Gerald Ford, who served doing the worst economy since the Great Depression. Granted a presidential pardon to that old crooked Richard Nixon. 1977 to 1981, Jimmy Carter, my favorite president. It's when I finished high school at Jack Yates Senior High as a drug addict. With the recruiters of the USMC Marine Corps helping me to drink a portion of something that would clean my urine so I can get into the forces. Only for himself to get a paycheck. He wasn't worrying about a young black boy coming out of third ward who needed some guidance he just wanted to get a paycheck but i'm just trying to tell y'all that god's hand is still at work what's your story thank god i was able to serve six years in the marine corps but thank god that in that six year i found jesus Jesus did not find me, but I found Jesus. And I'm glad to tell somebody today that I'm glad that God owns time. Yeah, he could have saved me on the streets of Third Ward, but the Lord took me from these grounds in order to prove that he's God everywhere. Can I get a witness? Thank you, Mama, for praying for me. Is there anybody up in here today that is still standing on the prayers of your mama? I remember, mama, yeah, I'm just trying to tell somebody that while you're in on God's time, you ought to be praying for your children. Mama used to say, Lord, bless my children. And Lord, touch Sammy. She called my name because she knew that the devil had his hands on me. Can I get a witness? But is that up in here? Anybody know that God can use the devil? Come here, Job. I have a high recommendation of you. Satan. Have you considered my servant, Job? And you know the story, but because Job knew that God on time, Job knew that God was in control. And not many days after Job went through all that he went through, uh, the story says uh, that God restored his family. God restored his blessings. 
And I'm wondering, uh, is there anybody up in here that don't mind testifying uh, that if uh, you learn uh, to wait on God, uh, God will make a difference in your life. Can I get a witness? Uh, I'm glad to report uh, that the Bible shows us uh, that God uh, was in Moses' house before Moses was born. God had him in mind before he had God in his own mind. You know the story. He ran away as a criminal. But he came back to Egypt as a deliverer. He ran away worrying about his own life. But came back to Egypt worrying about the life of God's people. Is there anybody up in here that want to tell God, Lord, I'm sorry for how I've messed up my time. But I want to tell somebody it ain't too late to let God use you in 2022. It ain't too late to let God use you even in the midst of what is going on in the White House. He raised Moses in Egypt for 40 years. He took Moses and send him to Baptist Seminary in the back of the desert. I wish somebody hear me. And then sent Moses back to Egypt to get his people from under Pharaoh. Can I get who in this? And Moses, yeah. Moses had the privilege of seeing God's hand work on in time. Moses saw God's hand with ten plagues in Egypt's land. Moses saw God's hand in time setting the children of Israel free. Moses in time saw God standing up the Red Sea putting twin towers aquariums on both sides allowing the children of Israel to walk across dry land and get them across safely Moses got a chance to see God feed his people with manna from heaven Moses got a chance to see God take care of a murmuring crowd in the, in, the, in the people. And I'm trying to tell somebody that if you get on God's side in God's own time, he will show you something. Can I get a witness? Brothers and sisters, let me close and tell you that God knows what he's doing. Say it. Yeah. God knows what he's doing in time because he owns time. Can you say it? Yeah. It is God who touched a young lady who was a spouse to Joseph. It is God in the future of what Moses and the children of Israel lived hope for. But God touched a woman, gave her a child without anybody interfering with it. And Jesus came to a dirty, dusty world. Jesus came in the midst of injustice. Jesus was born in the midst of unequality. But Jesus, in time, did his part. Heal the sick. Raise the dead. Can you say, yeah? Fed the hungry. 
gave sight to the blind. Can I get a witness? But I'm glad. I said I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad that he went to Calvary. And at Calvary, he died. I said he died. Anybody glad he didn't die too early? He didn't die too late. He died on time at Calvary. How you know, Reverend? Because on the cross, while he hung, bled and died, somebody came thinking he was still alive, ready to break his knees. But when they got there, he was already dead. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for dying in my stead on Calvary. They put him in a bar of tomb and he stayed there for three long days. But early, I said early, Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. Anybody here know that God controls time? Anybody here know that he owns time? Say yeah, say yeah, ain't he good? Ain't he kind? Say yeah, say yeah, say yeah, say yeah. Say yeah. I know he's all right. I know he's all right. Trust God. Trust God. Trust God. That even in this climate, trust God. The question is, what are you doing with your time on planet Earth? God bless the preacher. Come on, let's give it up for Pastor Sivaran. Amen. Amen. Thank God for such a message. Let our invitation be extended at this time. There may be one. There may be one in the house. want to give your life to Christ. There may be one on one of our social media feeds. I would like to join the Mount Hebron Church family. Or that you would like to join one of these other pastors. What are you doing with your time? It's time now to make your choice. Whether you will serve Egypt and the world or serve Israel and God's people. D.L. Moody says it's just one word. That one cannot walk with the word and walk with God. That today is your day. That, that if you're on Zoom, we ask that you would put it in your chat. you would like to join the church. If you're on Facebook, you can put it in your IM, your instant message. That today will be your day. 
If you're still on Instagram, you can put it in your DM. Your direct message. If you're watching by YouTube, are you not sure how to use your chat or your feed? There's a phone number for you. 713 713-9170. 713-9170. It is our privilege, it is our pleasure to extend this invitation. Someone may say, well, I'll wait till next week. I want to let you know next week is not promised. Tomorrow is not promised. Because before there's a tomorrow, there's a later on. And if we don't make it past the later on, we won't see tomorrow. We kindly extend this invite. There may be another. We extend this to you. As always, you're to accept or reject. We thank God for this one that has come today. And all the people said amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Miller and Mount Hebron, we have Sister Marjorie Colbert that's coming on the Christian experience. Amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you. This, this is a privilege for me. As we hooked up a couple of years ago, while a member of this family was transitioning, we have been close ever since. And I want to thank this mother first, Mr. Jefferson. I, I want to thank her for all that she, she does and how she stands by those children. You do know some of us, we never grow up to our mama. And mothers have a love that's an awesome love. So I want to thank her first. Then I want to thank God for you, for you making this decision, for you coming back. <laughs> and we thank God for you. I want to know if you want to make a statement. All right, now, let me, let me say this to you. I have been there for you. You just made it official today. That is my responsibility to be there. 
to just what Brother Silverman said, but the Lord has been working behind the scenes. I thank God for this space of time right now. And I want to get your hand and give you the right hand of restoration, restoring you back to your church. I want to thank God for you not looking like what you've gone through, but knowing that while you were going through, I was praying, but God was working. And here we are, not being able to write this chapter ourselves to watch God still at work. I, I think I speak for the Mount Hebron family that we will willingly and gladly accept you back home. How, how about that, Mount Hebron? And I want you to know how much I appreciate you, how much I love you, how much I respect you. When I see her, I expect to see you. <laughs> if she call me, I will be calling you. Let's do what we need to do, and let's go to heaven together. God bless you, and God keep you is our prayer. Come on, let's give it up for Jesus. Sherry, you're going to have to get some of those books that you and Sister Rasmus teach the class, and you're going to start passing them out to those that join. So get me three, so I'll get one to her, and one over here to Sister Nancy Williams and, and, and Brother Sanders. I want to do that as well. Again, God bless his word on today. Amen. God bless his word on today. We're now ready to move to our giving period. And we thank God for, for you again as we make ready for giving. Those of you that have already hit Give the Fire, we thank God for you. Those of you that would like to hit Give the Fire, if you would pull Give the Fire up, place it on your phone or your electronic device, that is G I V E L I F Y. Give the file, and you can pull up the Mount Hebron Missionary Baptist Church in Houston, Texas, not Henderson, Texas, in Houston, Texas, and you'll see the inside of the church, you'll see the pastor's photo, and you will be able to give on Give the file. Also, we have Cash App, dollar sign, T-H-E-M-O-U-N-T, -E 7817. Amen. Amen. Those of you that have envelopes, if you would kind of lift your hand, we will make sure that we come and get the envelope. I, I didn't know who that was dressed in that color over there. Uh, brother, is that Brother Can Carlos? He's going back in town. Amen. Thank God for Brother McKinney. Amen. Amen. Those of you that need envelopes to take home with you, if you raise your hand as well, we'll make sure that you get the excess envelope. Sunday school books are in, in the back. Um, you can see Sister Graham to get those Sunday school books, as well as Sister Miller to see, get those Sunday school books. We have Sunday school books in the back. And also, uh, where's Sister Graham? All right, I wanted to be sure before I announced the Reverend Gardner, I wanted to make sure I was right. Uh, let's do this. 
We have uh, our financial statements already. Those of you that are here that would like to uh, get your financial statements for year 2021, if you would go to the choir room, uh, you will be able to get your financial statements. Preachers, if you come to my office, uh, I have your financial uh, statements in my office. If you're on Zoom, Facebook, Instagram, and you're on your way with your tithes and your offering and you would like to do so, just tell Brother Fisher at the window and we will bring that financial statement to you from the choir room to the window. We will make sure that that is done. If you are looking and listening, you can come during the week between 10 and 5 and you can get your financial statement. So we want to make sure that you know that that is in, in place on today and that you're able to stop by to receive them. Good to see Sister Binder here with us today. Amen. A lady that lives in two cities and she's here with us today. God bless. She's on Sunday school. She's on corporate prayer. Uh, she's not here. She's on Sunday morning worship and she looks just like that. Amen. We thank God for you. Anyone that we missed that have an envelope that they may have passed by or that you need an envelope, we want to make sure that we give you this opportunity to give. Again, we thank God for each and every one of you. We're going to ask that. But which one of y'all prayed this morning? Neither one of y'all? One of these? I prayed. Pray over this offering. <laughs> Lord, we thank you this morning, God, that you blessed us to have it in our power to give. God, we pray that you bless those that don't have it in their power to give, but have it in their heart to give. You bless this offering and let it be to your own going of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Again, we thank God for you. Good to see so many of you out as we continue to start coming back to church. I thank God even for those that are still apprehensive because COVID is real. See my cousins over there. Good to see both of them. I'm so proud of them. They, they used to uh, not really come often at all. Then they start sitting on that very back row. I think they were trying to get close to that door. And they start moving up a little bit at a time. And now when I see them, I see them up close and I want to tell them how much I love them and how much I thank God for them. Y'all just keep on doing what you're doing. Again, may God bless each and every one of you. May God keep you as I'm proud that I forget anything. I forget anything. No, I didn't. All right, good to see those, those, those uncles plus one um, here today. Uncle B, Uncle Corley, Uncle George, Brother Randall. It's always good to see them they show I, I don't know what i'm gonna do if i ever separate them brother short i might be in trouble so i'll kind of leave them on on the same side so they can help one another but again thank god for each and every one of you and to the wives of these pastors and preachers let me let the wives stand up so you can see the wives of any it, yeah y'all don't want to stand up amen 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 we thank god for you all and, and for your spirit of worship and praise. We thank God for you. We'll now have our last words. So Simpson, good to see you, baby. We now have our last words by the preacher. We thank God for you, Reverend Tiberian. Thank you. thank you. Thank you so much, Pastor Miller. Thank you so much, Mount Hebron. Uh, we will continue to pray for each other let's get involved let's get engaged because God is at work in our land and we need to help so many we need to help so many let's not go backwards let's go forward would you stand
Now may the grace of God, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, may he rest, may he rule, and may he abide in each of you. And all the people of God said together, Amen.